another edition of your saltwater guide sent the uh, podcast series we do this every day normally at 12 o'clock pacific standard time but today i was called up last night and asked to run a boat for somebody today so i took a boat out fishing today with a bunch of people on it so that's why i was unable to do the show so we're doing it now at six o'clock at night, we'll see if anybody got the memo that we're doing the show tonight. And here it comes a few people logging on right now. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Your saltwater guide. I, I got a pretty good show lined up for you tonight. I was going to do it this today at noon, but then I got that magic phone call and I got to go fishing all day. And it was fun fishing down here today. We were uh we're down in Cabo San Lucas, as you all know, and we were out fishing today for Sierra, Sierra mackerel, and it was good fishing. We ended up with 38 nice Sierra mackerel for our group. We had nine people on the boat today, and uh, we had a very, very nice time. The weather was absolutely spectacular. So that's where I was today. That's why I wasn't able to do the show at 12 o'clock. So we're doing it now, and uh, let's don't forget, we got a few more days, and then you're going to have to buy these pre pre order them from Kelly and we'll get them for you at the show. But right now you can still get them delivered to your house. If you show up wearing one of these shirts at the Pacific coast sport fishing festival at the orange County fairgrounds, the second, third, fourth and fifth of March, you uh, show up showing one, wearing one of these shirts to the show, the PCS show at the orange County fairgrounds, you are going to get free stuff. Kelly girl has gathered up a quite a, collection of cool things to give you all at the PCS show. So make sure that you get one of these shirts. I don't want you to be walking around the show and seeing all the cool people walking around with all the cool stuff that they got for free from Kelly Girl and you didn't get your free stuff because you didn't get your t-shirt. Also, you're going to notice a lot of people. We've uh, sold well over 200 shirts so there's going to be quite a few people walking around the show wearing these shirts you want to be included in the cool people i know that for sure so make sure you get one of these shirts before you come to the show the pacific coast sport fishing show and in, in another week there we won't be able to deliver them in time to you so kelly girl will start taking pre-orders and if you get on the list with kelly girl we'll get you a shirt at the show you pre-buy it with Kelly Girl, and then when you show up at the show, we'll hand you your free gift, and we'll hand you your free your T-shirt. All right, gang. So today we're going to talk about something that we've never talked about on the show, and this is our 1112th, yeah, 1112th podcast we've done here in the last three years, and we've never really touched this subject, and it's a pretty cool subject. So we're going to talk about it tonight, and it's uh. When you're offshore fishing for tuna, yellowfin tuna, albacore, not so much the bluefin, but a yellowfin tuna and albacore, they have a tendency. It's so weird. It doesn't make sense. My beautiful wife got to see it, I don't know, 15, 14 years ago, albacore fishing. They love to follow whales around. They, I don't know what it is. I was turned on to it back in the 70s, fishing albacore. One of the captains I worked for in the 70s showed me, you get up as close as you can to the blue whale and cut across where his tail is and all of a sudden hook up. And now we see it with the sonars. We see these enormous schools of yellowfin tuna and albacore swimming around with these whales. Finback whales, blue whales. They, the humpback whales and the gray whales, not so much, but Big finback whales and big blue whales, those things are 70 to 110 feet long. The fish get up on them like it's structured, and they're following these things around. We had some unbelievable albacore years catching albacore on the tails of the blue, on the blue whale. Absolutely incredible. And we had it two years ago down below the Coronado Islands. Mr. Sean Morgan was my deckhand. He was in between jobs before he took over the wild and sack from me. And uh, he was my deckhand. And my good buddy Chase was my other deckhand. And we had our boss and a couple of his friends on the boat. And I found it off in the distance in my gyros. I found a finback whale. And we were not having a very good day. So we 
started heading out towards that finback whale. And I could not believe the amount of fish that I saw on this finback whale on the sonar. It was absolutely extraordinary. And so I swung around on him and I told Sean to throw some bait. He threw some bait and watch this. This is what we did for the next two and a half hours. It was absolutely incredible, the volume of skipjack and yellowfin tuna on this thing. And then what I did was I ended up calling the top gun and I got Bobby Taff and told him to get over there. He came hauling ass over, or excuse me, hauling butt over there. And he ended up getting exactly what we got. The volume on this whale was absolutely mind boggling. He had to have 10 or 15 ton of tuna on him. And this tuna was hungry, hungry, hungry. That's why it was falling around this whale. So look at this. This is just, I broke up this video. It's on this video. So that is just part of the video. I'm going to show you another piece of it in a second here. But if you saw every bait we threw in the water, the tuna were going bananas. Sean and Chase were super busy untangling lines. It was absolutely incredible. And that fish stuck with us, like I said, for two over two hours. And then we handed that fish off to the top gun. That whale was long gone. I don't think you could have found it with an airplane after we were all done. That whale just took off like they always do. They're cruising around looking for something to eat. But he deposited a couple tons of tuna onto the wild and sack. Because why? Because we had a phenomenal amount of bait. If you look at that bait tank on the boat, like I say in all my videos when I talk to you about bait, it's all about having the most bait you can possibly have. We were able to pull that school of yellowfin and skipjack tuna off of that whale and then turned it into one of the most incredible days of fishing that these guys had ever seen. It was absolutely incredible. One of the guys grabs one of our trolling rods with straight 80 pound on it. And Sean Morgan shows him and they take it and they start jack pulling these yellowfin tuna over the rail. It's absolutely incredible. The volume of fish and then Bobby Taff, like I said, comes in on the top gun 80 and takes over the school and they limit out the boat. I think it was on a two day trip. He caught limits for the two days. It was the second day of the two day. And it was a scratch bite for the whole fleet. And like I always tell you, I, I pretty much have a handle on most of the guys out there. People talk to me and I talk to them and it was a scratch day out there. The fleet was having a scratch day and we just got lucky because of all the years that I've spent fishing with all the different captains that I fished with, I was able to learn this technique. And I want you all to understand what I'm trying to let you know is when you're out there offshore, the number one thing I always tell you is quit fishing for boats. That's never going to do you any good. We were talking about it today. I made a little video today because one of my good buddies called me on the radio and told me, Hey, you got to get in this little little niche right here. It's full speed Sierra mackerel. And I came over there and the two of us were just having the time of our lives catching Sierra's full speed. 
And then I'll, if you watch the video, I'll post it in a couple of days. By the time we got done there, there was probably 12 or 15 boats bouncing off of each other because the two of us were on pretty large boats. And then the other boat saw us catching and they all came over. And this was one of those unique situations where the school was so big, we were able to all catch all the Sierra we wanted. But I just want you to see how wide open this thing gets. When this video first starts, I want you to watch. I'm going to braille a scoop of bait. And I think, I think there's like 20 baits in the scoop when I throw it in the water. Every single one of them gets boiled on. That's how much tuna is here. It's just watch this for a second. This is insane. So you see that fish, that guy just landed. Sean was using the trolling rods with straight 80 pound. It was absolutely the most incredible bite that these guys had ever seen. Sean and I have seen this many, many times, but I was lucky enough to have the GoPro with us on, on that trip. And we got some incredible footage. You can see the whole video over on our YouTube channel, your saltwater guide on YouTube and just type in limits of yellowfin. And you'll see that. Then there's also another part of it where the guy that caught that fish just now, or no, the guy that we're yelling at because he put his thumb on the spool and broke that fish off right away. He takes one of our trolling rods and we work with him a little bit and teach him how to do it because this fight went on and on and on, like I said, and there was only three people and then three crew members. So we taught this guy how to catch him with that trolling rod. We hammered the drag down as tight as we could because they weren't big enough to break off 80 pound. And then we taught the guy how to catch him and he caught five yellowfin in a row in less than five minutes. He caught five yellowfin in a row. It was pretty incredible. He caught his limit in a minute and I made a really cool video. And if you go to the YouTube channel, you can see that. But what I was trying to tell everybody was when you're out there offshore and you you're watching what's going on, you want to be paying attention all the time. And if you see a whale, you want to get over there to that whale and you want to try to drag your trolling lures. If you don't have an epic amount of bait like we had and you can't stop the school and throw a phenomenal amount of bait on them, you want to try to troll around that whale. But you got to get really close because those fish are not coming off the whale, especially on a 70 to 100 foot long whale. 
those fish are swimming right underneath of them. Why are they cruising around with that whale, that finback or that blue whale? Because they know that the whale is way smarter than they are. And the whale has sonar and it's going to find them something to eat. So they're cruising with the whale, waiting for the whale to find them some food. What happened on our trip? Well, we just happened to have all the food in our bait tank and we were able to feed those fish. And as long as we kept feeding them and kept throwing the bait on the right spot, which would be the downhill corner, like I talk about on my videos on my website on how to chum. It's super crucial. Like you heard me yelling and screaming at everybody on the boat. Keep the chum going. You got to keep feeding those fish. The only reason they're there is because they're there to eat. As soon as you quit feeding them, they are going to leave and go look for some food. So it's crucial to make sure that you're feeding them all the time. And the chum, the where you're throwing the chum is crucial also. You want the boat to be drifting over the chum. That way, if you're throwing the chum off the, off the other side of the boat and the boat's, let's say the boat's drifting like this and you're throwing the chum over here and your boat keeps drifting away, but you keep throwing the chum over here because you're like, I see fish boiling. Yeah, but those fish keep moving away because your boat is drifting. You always, if the boat is drifting this way and every single boat, I think there's three boats I've ever seen that only drift bow first. Most 90% of the boats drift stern first. You always want to throw your bait on the corner opposite of the way the wind is blowing so that the boat will drift over your chum and before you're able to catch fish like we were able to catch in this One video. sec. I so, didn't get that. Thank you Could very you try much again? for watching this. I hope you enjoyed that video. Those of you on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, you go watch this thing again when you get home from your drive. And check out this, the cool videos. I mean, it's pretty spectacular to watch the volume of fish swim around under the boat. When you're watching the guys flick their baits out there, if you pay close attention and you look real close, you're going to see yellowfin, tuna, and skipjack coming up underneath the bait. They're not actually getting it, but you're seeing the flashes. Boom, boom. There's so much fish under the boat. And then you saw me throw that handful of bait out there. 20 fish jumped out of the water to eat it. Pretty incredible stuff. We have lots of that stuff, but you know what's really going to be cool tomorrow? Tomorrow, we're not going to be out fishing. Tomorrow, we have one of the most spectacular hum human beings on the planet joining us on our podcast. My wife's very excited. She loves this man. I love this man from the bottom of our heart. This man did so much for the sport fishing industry, so much for the sport fishing boats in Southern California and beyond. So much for the industry with Fox Sports West and Inside Sport Fishing. That TV show, he produced it flawlessly. It was epic. It was so fun to watch. But I knew Michael before that when he was running charter boats. I've known Michael for a very long time, and he is going to be on our show tomorrow. It's going to be spectacular. Share with everybody. Make sure, let everyone know Michael Folks is going to be on the show live tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Those of you on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, it's going to be a phenomenal podcast. You're going to love the interview with Michael Folks. We've been buddies for a long time. We're going to have a good time talking. He said he's going to give me an hour, so we're going to get to do an hour show tomorrow. I'm pretty excited. Make sure you tune in for that one, gang. Thanks for always being there for us. Thanks for sending us those stars and the badges and the diamonds. And all the love that you give Kelly and I and Marley and the cats. And especially Finn. He really needs to feel the love right now with the two baby kitties in the house. He's not feeling a lot of love. So we need to let Finn know we love him. Gang, don't forget Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Show. Second, third, fourth, and fifth of March. It's going to be incredible at the Orange County Fairgrounds. There's going to be a phenomenal amount of speakers at the show. It's going to be unbelievable kelly girl and i will be there we'll be speaking every day at the show we'll have all kinds of stuff i i promise you if you bring your children i will be there with a giant bag of free stuff my sister stepped up to the plate she's going to give me a whole bunch of stuff from dana wharf sport fishing just for the children it's going to be incredible 
We'll have free fishing passes for the kids. We'll have sh all kinds of stuff, shirts, hats. I don't really know exactly what Donna's put together, but we will have a great show. And if you ask any of your friends that have ever come see, see me speak, it's very, 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 very tame. The children are going to have a good time. I don't use any bad words ever. And I tell all the children in the audience, if you do hear Captain Dave say a bad word, everybody gets free stuff. So they all listen. It's going to be incredible. You're going to have a blast. I promise I will entertain you. I will see you all at the show. But tomorrow, tune in. The show is going to be incredible with Michael Folks. I'll see you all at noon tomorrow. 